Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be continuing something that we started last week on this channel on actually um, upgrading the CPU in this computer. And if you guys haven't seen that video go ahead and check it out up in the cards right now so it'll kind of be up to speed on what it is that we're going to be doing here. Uh, and that's because in today's video we're going to be trying a couple more things to actually get this computer um, possibly running with that one gigahertz processor. So let me just kind of sum up what we did in the last video for those of you who uh, maybe forgot or just haven't watched it. We went ahead and upgraded the processor in this computer to a 733 megahertz Intel Pentium 3. Previously it had a 433 megahertz Intel Celeron. Now we tried to put in the one gigahertz uh, processor that was sent to me by Austin along with the 733 megahertz, um, but the machine did not post with it. Um, and I went ahead and put in the 733 megahertz and the machine actually ran, but it's only running right now at 600 megahertz. So it's not actually running at the full speed that this processor can support. And I got a lot of comments on that video saying, do a BIOS update. And I believe me, I looked into doing a BIOS update on this computer, but I was not sure if the BIOS update file that I found, which is this file right here, would work on this system. So what this is, is a uh, version of a BIOS for a gateway computer with this motherboard model number which is the same model number that I have in this computer from November 20th of 2000 the BIOS version in this computer right now is from April 4th of 2000 now the reason why I was unsure if this was going to work is because um, yes this is the exact same motherboard that I have in here but uh, it is slightly different, and let me kind of explain why. If you scroll down here in this file, and it says, turn on your computer and press the F1 key while it's starting up. In the BIOS setup utility, verify that the BIOS version reads WL81020A.15A.0007.P0X, and it says where the X is variable. Now, this right here is exactly what my uh, motherboard says, but this part of the string is different. On my motherboard, it says 0004 in the BIOS. So that made me wonder if this tool is even going to install the right BIOS um, update for this motherboard, or if this is an incompatible version. Because it says that, you know, make sure the BIOS version reads this, and it specifically says that the X right here is variable. It doesn't say that this is variable, but we're just gonna try it anyway. And the reason why I'm kind of questioning if this is even going to work is because in some screenshots that I've seen of people uh, running, like like I mentioned in that original video, like the guy running the 733 megahertz Intel uh, Pentium 3 in his machine, his BIOS was not this version. It was exactly the same as what I have. It was all of this, and then when you got to this point, it was 0004.p03, which is exactly what mine is. So I would think that the version that's already installed, like the BIOS version this machine already has, in theory would work. And I had a lot of you guys saying that it could be the bus speed because this machine is only running at a 100 megahertz bus, even though that this processor supports a 133 megahertz bus. Now I went into the BIOS and tried to change the bus speed, but there was no option. The BIOS displays what the bus speed is. It does not allow you to change it from within uh, the BIOS, so you have to resort to actually uh, modifying the jumpers on the physical motherboard, which we could try to do. But if this update works, um, we're going to see if maybe this new version allows us to actually specify uh, the bus speed. But we're going to see if all of you guys in the comments are right about this, if this version actually works on here. So basically what I did is I downloaded um, this file right here, which is a, a self-extracting executable. It extracts everything with, I believe it was 7-zip or a WinZip, and it automatically opened up this readme document right here, which gives us a nice step-by-step -step guide on what we actually have to do. So it first tells you to, before you update the BIOS, enter the current BIOS and write down the settings because obviously they're gonna be overwritten if you had made any changes in there. But the only real thing I've changed is like the boot order. So I don't really think we're gonna have much to modify. And then it lets you know that the files you need extract into the folder C driver and then the same name that the executable has. So we will actually go into um, the hard drive here. Now, I don't know if um, because Windows 7 is actually recognizing this drive as the E drive. Like the drive that we're booted on right now is the E drive. So I don't know if it's going to save it to the C drive anyway. So C, yeah, driver is on here. So it's probably extracted it to the E drive because that is what we're booted into right now. 
No, it hasn't. Oh, I wonder if it's... Okay, so it's not in either of these folders. Uh, that is definitely not... Is it under cabbed, maybe? Okay, so it's under the cabs folder. It's not... This thing literally says C slash driver, and it's under the cabs folder. But it did extract to the C drive, even though that the installation that we're booting into right now is off of the E drive. But anyway, so we're going to go into this folder, and then it says um, from the edit menu, click select all, open the edit menu again, and click copy. So they just kind of outline how to press control A and cr uh, control C if you didn't know what those keyboard shortcuts did. Um, and what you have to actually do is we need to get a blank floppy diskette, which I've got one right here. And we have to actually copy all of these files over to a floppy diskette. So we're going to go ahead and put this into the system right now. There we go. And we're going to control A, control C. We're going to go to computer, floppy disk drive A, and we're gonna paste everything in here. And then it just basically tells you how to boot into the Intel flash memory update utility, um, which you know just is going to run once we actually restart the system with this floppy disk inserted. And uh, then it will say, you know, how to basically select the uh, .bio file. So everything has been copied over to the floppy diskettes. So this is the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to see if this BIOS uh, version actually works with this computer. So let's go ahead and restart here. So you can see that uh, in true MJD fashion, for whatever reason, we're getting a non-system disk or disk error. There's no way to like run the BIOS update from here. But I do want to show you guys kind of the issue that we're having with the IDE uh, drive. Now, basically, from what I can narrow down, the reason why the system is not able to boot off of the DVD, like a DVD inserted into the DVD drive, and this might also be why it wasn't working with those uh, CD images for Windows 7, the a couple of unofficial versions that I tried, is when you go into IDE configuration, it does recognize the secondary IDE master as a light on DVD RW drive. But when you go in here, to select the type, the only type in here is a CD-ROM. There is no DVD uh, option in here. Now, I actually tried to manually specify other ATAPI. Uh, that did not work. But the interesting thing is that I can't seem to figure out is I didn't have this problem before. I've not done a single BIOS update to this system, like at all. I've not updated the BIOS on this at all. And I had a DVD drive in this computer before and I've booted off of DVDs. Like, I know for a fact I've done it in older videos. And for whatever reason now, it's it's not wanting to boot off of DVD. So I don't get, like, what changed because nothing in the BIOS actually changed. So that's what's kind of weird. But anyway, we can go in here and just specify this as auto as it was before. Once again, you can see it just basically is going to come up with, uh, yep, non-system disk or disk error. Well, we do have another option. We can actually use a Windows 95 boot disk, which has DOS on it, obviously, and boot into DOS and then swap out the diskette with this one and try to launch the BIOS setup that way. So we can try that. Okay, so we have the same error come up. So we're going to put in the Windows 95 boot disk. We're going to press OK. And there we go. OK, so what we're going to do now is swap out the diskette since we have DOS loaded into memory here. So we're going to view the files on this diskette. And we got autoexec.bat. We're going to run autoexec.bat. There we go. OK, so we want to flash the BIOS. BIOS update in progress. OK. Programming complete, operation completed successfully. Let's hope this works. System will be rebooted if current operation is successfully completed. Uh, request for CMOS defaults or ES, ESCD clear future has been noted. Programming flash memory with contents of file. So it's automatically found the file, which again, the readme told us to like, it should specify and like ask you what, what file to, to uh, specify. It's just apparently found it for us. So right now it is flashing the BIOS and it says programming complete. And it looks like we're restarting here. And there we go. Are we actually booting up? We're, at, we're actually booting up. All right. And it looks like we've got the new version, but we still, yep, we've got the new version, but we still have the exact same thing going on with 600 E megahertz with the 100 megahertz front side bus speed. Uh, so that basically didn't, didn't change anything. So that is unfortunate. Let's see though if we now have a DVD option in here. We don't. We still do not have 
a DVD option in here, so that's kind of unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I was kind of responding to a couple comments because people were saying go into the BIOS and like change the the, the front side bus speed. I, I can't do that. There's like no way to change any of this here that's all grayed out. But the BIOS update actually worked, so that's that's good. We've got the latest BIOS installed. All right, so a little bit of a change in setup here currently. Uh, I'm actually on my computer now using OBS to record this part of the video uh, because I wanted to show you guys this old support document that I actually pulled up from Gateway. This is an archive um, of Gateway's support website. It was pulled on November 4th, 2002 from the Internet Archive. And I was basically able to verify that this particular chipset on this motherboard does not support a higher front side bus uh, than 100 megahertz. Like 100 megahertz is the maximum front side bus speed that it supports. And we can verify this if we go down here to processor support, ZIF socket, it'll say right here, the host bus speed of the motherboard is 66 slash 100 megahertz. So it's basically not gonna be able to run at anything higher than 100 megahertz, which is what it's running at right now. However, I did hear back from Austin and he thinks that the one gigahertz CPU, keep in mind that one has a 100 megahertz front side bus speed, that one might actually work with this new BIOS update. So we're gonna try that out and we're gonna see if uh, the 1.0 gigahertz uh, Pentium 3 that he also sent me that didn't post before with the old BIOS version, we're gonna see if it works now. So let me switch back over to uh, my other setup. All right, so we've got the new CPU installed and this is the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing will actually post now with that new BIOS update. Machine is on, let's see if we get a green light. And it looks like we don't. All right, guys, well, uh, this is definitely not the result that I'm sure we were all hoping for. Um, yeah, it definitely kind of sucks. Even with the new BIOS version, we are not able to utilize that one gigahertz CPU. But we have learned a couple of things. We've learned that basically what we have now in this computer, which was the uh, 733 megahertz CPU running at 600 megahertz, is pretty much the max CPU that this thing can support. Um, as it currently sits. So most likely the reason why I was able to find all of those other screenshots of what appeared to be this same motherboard running um, with the 733 megahertz and even with the one gigahertz, Austin actually shared a uh, image with me that showed um, the newer BIOS version still on the same motherboard um, but running at one, I think it was actually 1.1 gigahertz. Um, I assume all those motherboards have a different chipset. Um, that's most likely what it is um, because the whole reason why this machine is maxed out uh, at a 100 megahertz bus speed is because of the chipset. So that is why we're not able to utilize the full potential of the 733 megahertz. But the one gigahertz uh, CPU is just apparently not compatible with this even with that new BIOS version and I have verified that this BIOS version that I got on this thing right now is the latest uh, from November of 2000 so yeah like I said definitely not the uh, result we were hoping for but we still learned a lot um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up um, be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do multiple times per week on this channel. And if you guys have any other suggestions of some more upgrades, whether they be hardware or software that you wanna see on this computer, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. I've already got a couple pretty cool ideas that I'd like to try out myself, but obviously with the hardware upgrades, it's just going to take time for me to find uh, pieces of hardware that uh, will work with this system and obviously find them at a pretty decent price. I'm thinking of updating the GPU in this thing. I would like to get a pair of speakers. I know I've said that before. And I also want to uh, see if we can go the CF card or SSD route and kind of try to um, get a faster hard drive in this computer or a uh, faster device to store files on. Um, 
so if you guys want to see any of those or if you have any other suggestions be sure to leave those down below and as always i just want to thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video